We're now going to have a look at security and authentication, which could become quite a big subject because the way that you authenticate will depend on the type of application that you are building. For example, you might be building an application where you're just consuming your own API. You might have a front end, which is JavaScript using React, Vue, Angular, or whatever, which just communicates with the back end. And in which case, just normal session authentication, which you use in any everyday web applications, would serve the purpose. You have email, password, once you're logged in, then you'll have a session cookie and your front end will be free to communicate with the back end that way. You could be consuming a third party API and that's the type we're gonna look at here by using API tokens. So the reason I've chosen to do this is that I'm aware that there are other uh, tutorials online, for example, Symfony Cast, where they've taken care of the first scenario where it's a JavaScript front end or a Jamstack uh, type application which is consuming its own API. So I think by actually covering the other side, the API tokens um, type of authentication, it means that uh, regardless of which type of application you are building, then at least there's information online to do either the Jamstack type where you consume your own API or the third party authentication using API tokens. So let's make a start. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience. And if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. In our application at the moment, we just have two different entities, and that is manufacturer and product. But in order to have authentication, we're going to need to have a user entity or some way of representing a user. So that's what we're going to do first. In order to do that, we're going to pull in a bundle called Maker Bundle, which will help us actually just build um, a user entity with some extra, which implements some extra uh, interfaces which are used for authentication. So let's go over to our terminal. By the way, the branch for this lesson is called API token. So if you go to GitHub and look at the branches, then API token will be the one which is uh, up to date for this lesson. Okay, so what we need is composer require maker and so because we're using symphony flex we can just use this short version of the command here and this should go and get us the maker bundle and if you don't know what the maker bundle is what it does is it just gives you some assistance in creating things like entities for creating uh, authenticators which we'll probably look at in the next lesson and so let's actually put that to practice now and have a go at making a user which we can do with php bin console make user so um, whereas you can sometimes use this to make entities which we'll do when we come to making an API token but if you actually say make user then it will um, although we are creating a user entity it'll just do those extra things that we need for making a user for the purposes of authentication so hit enter there and it'll say the name of the security user class and the default is user, so I can hit enter and it'll use that. Do you want to store user data in the database via Doctrine? And the default is yes, so I'll just hit enter again. Enter a property name that will be the unique display name for the user. Okay, so we're not going to get into this too much because we're mainly concerned with the API thing. So we'll stick with the default again, which will be email. Does the app need to hash check user passwords? So even though we are using API tokens, I'm just gonna leave this as yes, because if you think of a normal application, or say you're signing up to a third party API, before you actually get an API token, you actually need to be able to sign up to that. And so you'll just authenticate normally, you'll create an account using a email and a password, and then you'll go and create your API token once you've actually created your account. So. We'll stick with yes for that. So this is quite easy. We've just stuck with all the defaults there so far. Let's close our terminal and let's go and have a look at our user entity. So here it is. We'll have a slow scroll through this. So you should see this class user implement user interface. Okay, so these are um, authentication related interfaces. We're just going to have a look at this and you'll see that it has a few sort of authentication related uh, kind of methods there. 
let's actually go and have a look at this other one. So this is for when you're authenticating with passwords, then it says that you must implement a get password method. Okay, all good there, keep scrolling through here. So here's, here's our properties, I've kept it as light and simple as possible, and we're not gonna use much of this stuff. Uh, ID, email, roles, so um, a user entity must have at least one role in order for authentication to work correctly in Symfony. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into that stuff. I do have a, a series on authentication in Symfony on YouTube. It's a bit dated, but um, the stuff regarding roles is still all relevant and still all works exactly the same way. Okay, and then we've got some getters and setters. Uh, it gets user identifier, so this is how this is what Symphony's authentication. Uh, if we specify this, this is what it will use to identify a user. However, as you will see in the next lessons, we're actually going to use a token for the API side of things in order to identify a user. So don't get um, too hung up on any of this stuff for the moment. It's just showing you what has been created, really. We're not really, most of this stuff is not really going to be uh, relevant to us and the way that we're going to actually um, use it in API platform. Okay, so next thing what we need to do is we need to go and create a migration for this. So, PHP bin console. I'm just going to say make migration and that should uh, work for our changes for our new user class which we've just created. Okay, and then let's go over to migrations and see what has been created. I usually make sure that I check these things before I actually migrate them to the database. Uh, just to be sure that it has created what I expected it to. So, quick glance at that, that looks okay. I think we can go and run this migration now. So, PHP bin console, and it will be Doctrine Migrations Migrate. Ask you if you want to make these changes, just click yes. And then let's go over to table plus, and we'll just check out our new users table. Hit refresh there. Okay, and so we have an empty users table. We might as well put in a couple of users here so that we have something to work with. So I'm just going to say info at Gary Clark Tech. Uh, for role, so you can't leave this as null. Just put square brackets and that will represent an empty uh, array of roles. And for password, I'm just going to type in some gibberish uh, nonsense, which looks like a password. And then just create another one, and that way we can uh, play around with having users which do authenticate and users which don't authenticate. For example, ones which have tokens and watch ones which don't. And again, for the password, I'm just typing in some gibberish because passwords aren't important to us. We're going to focus on API tokens. Okay, so I'll hit enter there and then command S, and that should save those. Just refresh to make sure they are saved. Okay, great stuff. We can now move on to creating an API token entity. So the considerations regarding API tokens, I'm gonna to make a dedicated API token entity. You could have an API token field on your user entity. Uh, that would be perfectly valid. However, if you think about third party uh, API services, you often have the option to create a new token. Say, for example, you might think someone has compromised security or got hold of your token, or for whatever reason, you might want to change your API token. Um, but it wouldn't make a very good application if you just replaced one with the other. You might need that audit trail for whatever reason in order to see what previous API tokens you've had. And so for that reason and for various other reasons, I think it's best to model an API token, have a dedicated entity for that. And so that's what we're going to do. And we'll rate, relate the R API tokens to our users. So I'm going to clear my terminal and I'm going to say PHP bin console. And this time I'm going to say make entity. Okay, class name of the entity to create or update. So we're going to call this API token. Mark this class as an API platform resource. No, because this isn't a resource. It's not like our manufacturer or our product where we want people to be able to hit an endpoint and read information regarding uh, it as a resource. So we're going to say no for this. And so we're only going to have a couple of properties. and One will be token. 
and that will be a string will stick with the field length cannot be nullable add another property so we need a user property in order to relate our token to a user so we'll say user and this will be of type relation so if I start typing relation then it gives me some auto completion there I'll hit enter what class should this entity be related to again if I start typing it will give me some auto completion and it will be related to a user and relation type so let's think about this we want a user to be able to have many tokens because uh, say for example a user has a token that expires or for whatever they generate a new one you still want to be able to keep that audit trail of the previous tokens so a user needs to be able to have more than one token however an API token doesn't need to have more than one user it will belong to just one user so our type of relation is many tokens to one user and so for that reason we're going to say many to one is the API token user property allowed to be null and we shall say no do you want to add a new property to user so that you can access update API token objects from it for example user get API tokens I think that would be very useful and would make for a good application so we shall say yes new field name inside user API tokens that looks like a good name to me do you want to automatically delete orphaned API token objects? So what this means is if you remove a user, do you want to remove all the API tokens uh, which belong to it from the database? I think that's probably a good thing to do. Uh, just keep our database nice and clean. So we'll say yes. Add another property. So do we want any more properties? I think we're going to keep this nice and simple. I could have expiry dates or things like that but let's not get too deep into that stuff I just want to be able to show you how we can authenticate using a token most of our work is going to be centered on uh, the authenticator class which we'll create in the next one so we'll just hit enter and that will bring us out of that and all we need to do is go and look at our new API token class or entity which we have created and this is our API token so just a couple of properties we have the id auto incrementing id we have our token and we'll generate one of those or we'll do something quick and dirty in order to quickly make one of those in a minute and then we have users so let's have a look at this relationship here so we have a many to one relationship our target entity is the user class and it is inversed by an api tokens property let's go and look at our user and so here we can see that we have an API tokens property now. One user to many API tokens, target entities API token class, and it is mapped by the user property on the API token entity. One other thing I should show you here, which I think we'll end up using, is that we have uh, repositories for our newly created classes. So we have a user repository, and then we have our API token repository so when we generated our entities using the maker bundle using the commands the maker commands then it generated um, repositories for us also which is quite handy and like I say we'll probably end up using one or the other of these in order to assist us with our authentication let's go ahead and migrate our API token table so PHP bin console make migration okay and we'll go and look at our migrations folder should have a new one here for our api token let's just have a quick glance at this create table api token id user id token okay that all looks good and as you can see we've got the foreign key constraint which references the id column on the user table so all we need to do now is just php bin console doctrine migrations migrate and again choose yes over to table plus refresh and so now we have an api token table and just three fields the id 
the user ID and the token. So let's generate, let's finish off actually by adding a token to this database. I want something which looks like a fairly authentic looking uh, API token. So I'm just going to knock up a quick little file here. It's up to you if you just want to type in some uh, nonsensical characters in the API token field there. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to make mine look a little bit like a real API token. So I'm creating a PHP file and I'll just call this generate token. So this is just going to be a little throwaway thing here and we'll say echo bin to hex. So binary to hexadecimal and then we'll say random bytes 60 PHP end of line. And then if I go to my terminal and say PHP generate token that looks like a pretty good API token to me. We'll copy that, go back to uh, table plus, and we'll say one, user ID will be one, paste that in there, hit enter, save that. And so now we have a user table with a couple of example users in there. We have an API token table, and we have our user entity and API token entity, which we've related to each other using a API tokens property and a user property. In the next one, what we'll do is we'll actually start figuring out how to authenticate a user using API tokens by building a custom authenticator. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.